This talk is about selecting or designing a scientific instrument. For example, in this image we see a laser Doppler velocimeter which is used to measure air velocity at this point as air flows around this car. We use scientific instruments every day. Calibers for measuring distance, a torque sensor for measuring torque, a manometer for measuring pressure. So a scientific instrument is a device for measuring a variable. This is like force, length, pressure, velocity, torque that is used to characterize the physical world. The reasons for learning about scientific instruments are so we can minimize cost and effort and so we can get better results. So how do we go about selecting or designing a scientific instrument? I think the first thing is a literature review. If we want to measure XYZ, there's many, many different ways to measure it, and people have figured this out, and our literature review will reveal the best ways to do this. Idea two is to pick the simplest possible measurement method. We're always attracted to things that are um, cool technically and very sophisticated and what you want to do is avoid getting sucked into this because it'll take all your time on your project to get this measurement system figured out. There's four factors that affect quality of a measurement. The first one is static performance, the second one is dynamic performance, and then there's practical concerns and the big picture. Let's look at the big picture first. Two key concepts are precision and accuracy. And precision means that the data points, such as right here, are close together. So for an example of that, let's suppose we were measuring the mass of this weight. And let's suppose we knew it was 50 grams, so 50.000 grams. So we had a very accurate calibration mass. If we had a measurement system that was precise but not accurate, the measurements might look like this. 74.1, 74.0, They're all clustered together like this, but they're not close to the true value, which is 50. If our instrument is not precise or accurate, the measurements might cluster, for example, right here, around a value of 74 grams which is not close to the true value of 50 grams and they're also spread out over a large range. So this is what not precise or accurate looks like. If our instrument is accurate but not precise, our measurement values are spread out but if we average them they tend to be very close to our true measurement which in this case is 50 grams. A measurement that is both precise and accurate is clustered around the true measurement, 50 grams, and we see that the data points are not very far spread out. So this is the ideal situation. Thus, accuracy is how close a measurement is to the true value, and precision is how close measurements are to each other. For example, if we want to measure fluid velocity at this point, we can gauge precision by taking repeated measurements and see how close they are to each other. So we hold the conditions the same, measure velocity over and over, and then we can gauge precision. However, accuracy is a different animal. How close is the measured velocity here to the true velocity? The problem is we never know what the true velocity is or have any way of really finding it out. So estimating accuracy is much harder than estimating precision. So our big challenge is how do we make estimates of the accuracy of our measurement? Here's another key idea. We want our measurements accurate, of course, and as we move to increase the precision, the factor that goes up is cost. And much of the time in experiments we're doing a iteration. So when we're doing iteration number one or number two, very often this is the system I want. 
because if I average this, I can get an estimate of the true value of whatever it is I'm trying to, to measure. Only if the measurement is super important and I have a lot of time and money do I want to strive for both precise and accurate. Let's look next at practical concerns in the context of selecting an instrument. So suppose I want to measure velocity at this point, so that's air velocity, as air flows around a car. A couple of choices are shown here. This system is a laser Doppler velocimeter, and this system here is the common pitot tube. My first practical concern is functionality, which means, will the instrument give me what I want in terms of out of my measurement? If I want to measure the um, time varying velocity there, the pitot tube over here will not work because that only measures a time average velocity. So if I want to know something about turbulence, I want to definitely select the laser Doppler velocimetry. The second thing is if I want to know the angle of the velocity vector, I cannot do that with the pitot tube, so I'd want to select a uh, laser Doppler velocimeter. On the other hand, if I just want a simple estimate of the velocity and I can use a piece of uh, ribbon to estimate the flow direction, then I'd want to select the pitot tube. So it really comes down to what I want to know and which instrument do I need to give me the kind of data that I need for my given experiment. Cost is always a factor. This system is around $100,000. This system is around $100. Simplicity is a factor. This system is super simple, very easy to set up. This system is very complicated, takes a great deal of time. Similarly, training time, the time to learn the system. How good of a measurement do I need? How accurate? How precise? And what's the robustness of my system? Will it tend to break and require repair? Or is it very reliable and robust? Static performance of an instrument is also very important. And there's quite a few factors, and I've listed three here. And sensitivity just simply means how much signal do you get as you change your measured variable. For example, if I was measuring mass here. And generally, we want something with a lot of output signal. In this case, 5 volts would be very easy to measure. If this was only 5 millivolts, that's hard to get an accurate measurement because of electronic noise. Linearity refers to the output response being linear with the uh, input variable that we're trying to measure. And resolution deals with, can we measure to the gram, to the tenth of a gram, to the hundredth of a gram, to the thousandth of a gram. In terms of the dynamic performance of an instrument, the single most important variable is the time constant. And what this means is illustrated in this sketch. So suppose we put a temperature measurement device into hot water. So this is hot water here. The temperature as a function of time might follow a curve like this. So it takes some time in order for the measuring instrument to record the correct temperature. And we generally want this time, which would be about three time constants, to be much less than a characteristic uh, time change uh, of our experiment. The big ideas I want to leave you with. In general, there's many ways to measure anything we want to measure. What you always want to do is get in the literature, uh, learn about some of the various ways, and select the easiest, best way to get the job done. Secondly, select or design the simplest possible instrument. Save the more complicated instruments for iteration 3, 4, or 5. But especially when you're first starting an experiment, do things in the simplest way possible. Big picture idea. Accuracy. This is the key thing to focus on, is how close the measurement is to the true value. If your data is spread out, you can always average to get an estimate of what the true value is. But if your measurement is not accurate, there's nothing you can do to fix it. Number four, you want to consider precision, which is how close the measurements are to each other. So that's precision. Number five, when you're thinking of the performance of your instrument, think of both static performance, things like resolution, linearity, and dynamic performance, and especially think of the time constant. Will your instrument respond quickly enough to measure what it is you're trying to measure 
given a dynamic experiment. This slide summarizes quality. In other words, how to design or select a killer instrument. Think of practical matters, things like, will the instrument measure what I want it to measure? What's the cost, etc. Think of the big picture. How close is a measurement to the true value? And how close are the measurements to each other? Think of the static performance. And we've talked about some variables for that. And think about the dynamic performance if whatever you're measuring is varying with time. Thank you very much. I hope you have enjoyed the video.